Hello class, uh, this will be the recorded thing for section two. So yet again, this is just material in case you can't come to section. I recommend highly coming to section. Uh, happy Martin Luther King Day is tomorrow, Monday. So we will not be having section or office hours that day. So now getting into the material. So I am going to be sharing my desktop. Get that out of the way. So some people still have been asking me about connecting a SAS folder for SAS University. So it's uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. So here is my SAS University edition. I have two. All of you guys probably just have one. So this is the one I use. The first one I do not use. So after I start the one I am running, I will go to settings for this. And as you guys can see, my bar for options are at the top to change settings. For some users, it'll be all on the left-hand side. If you're one of those people, and I believe a Windows, I'm on a Mac, so I will be on the top. So then we go to shared folders. You see I've connected my folder. And you're gonna go to the plus, go to the folder path name, click read only, on amount, and make permanent. And make sure you found my folder. And then you will be good to roughly start and just be able to drag material from this folder to the SAS. So, and then you will be able to see it. Like here, I have our airports data and our cars that we used in our last online section or recorded section. So, just dragging in will make it work. So, for section two, a brief overview of what I'll be going over is yes, we're going to still work with databases, but we'll start off with a proc contents, contents, and then we're going to go into some manipulating databases like the where statement, if, comma, if, comma, uh, we'll do key and drop to. Just to show you some other ways to create um, or how to use databases and just what these fields are for. So we're gonna make a database, so data, I'm gonna name this section two. So our inputs will be name, character, eight values for the character. I forgot the colon between the dollar sign of the eight. And then we will have work. And that will be another character of eight. We will have salary, which will be a numeric. We'll make that six and then we'll have time. And then we're going to have that be three because we'll have time be in years. And then data lines, which is the same as cards. So we went over that uh, last section. So either one will work just depending on user's preference. So we'll start with me. My work is TA. Salary, we'll do 15. Time, this is three, we'll do. So next person will have John, work, um, carpenter, salary, 50, time, 10. We'll actually like time 12. Then we'll have Joe, he will also be a carpenter, salary 60, and he'll be 15. Then we'll have another Tom. This one will be electrician. I probably spelled that one wrong. A uh, salary 100 in time eight. So that should be good for now and then run. Now, many uh, looking at the last section, I know some people would leave off the run statement. The run is important just because we got to make sure our code runs. So you see here, uh, I do not have all of my letters for the characteristics, so I'll just go and change that. We know that's a quick, easy change, and I believe the professor showed you how to use the at instead of the colon in section, so you can use either way. It is up to you. Yes, I did spell electrician wrong. Um, if you would like to fix my spelling errors, feel free. So this was just creating the database. I'll 
comment this out for everybody. Data. Is okay. Now we're going to use a proc contents. All right. Now we also need a data. I also noticed that some people forgot the data and when we were trying to do a proc print and we're wondering why they couldn't print anything. So you need the data equals to tell them, to tell the computer exactly what data you're using. Even if you only have one data in it, in your code, it still needs to know which one. And you can have these both on the same line. It will run. Uh, I'd like to separate them just because I think it looks a little nicer and it's easier to read. So going down, we see our the product contents. It tells us our data set name work it means it's only temporary. So if we leave or turn off our SAS studio, we'll have to recreate this by running the section code again. It tells us the observation, the amount of variables, indexes, our observation length. Do we have any deleted? Is it compressed or sort? Sorted. So we're going to show how to do sorted later on in fact in uh, this class along with the others. And it just shows us some more information down here. So name, salary, time, and work tells us it in the alphabetical. It tells us the number along with the character type. So it's pretty good. This is uh, good information if you're just trying to figure out what's going on in the database and how it's, uh, what's in there and what's the type of variables. So type of variables is always important when you're working on something just because if you're working on a, if you're trying to do greater than or less than on a characteristic value, we all know that uh, characteristics values will not, uh, it'll be interesting. Let's just say that. So data, we'll call this temp one. So set section underscore two. So this set section underscore two, we'll just have it, we'll just make it so it, it should have all the code from the previous one. So we see it has everything. Oh, also that it's so longer. So it has everything that our section one database or section two database has, but we just named it temp one and set is a quick way to do that. And we only want where this database for temp one, where salary is greater than uh, 20. So I want a salary that's greater than 20. So let's say I'm looking for a job and I want to make sure my salary is greater than 20. I want to see what the type of the amount of people out there in there. So I see John, Joe, and Tom all have this. They are carpenters and electricians. I see their salary, but I do not see the first Tom or the Tom TA where his salary and time was there. So let's go. So we'll do this again. So data temp two. Now I can save this as temp one again, but if I save it as temp one, this database for temp one will be overwritten and it will know, and we cannot be able to view it that way. So I'll name this a new name. And if time, that's the a different variable we have, is greater than 10, and we'll see if the if statement has a big difference. Uh, I believe you guys went over in section where the if statement does have a difference and make a difference. So here we go. We have our two observations where time is greater than 10. So this is important, the if statement. So if we're using where and if, so if you're using where and if there's one difference between the two, so uh, make sure you are using correct where access if when changing data at same step. So if you're doing more work on the during the same stuff, you will need to know the correct if and where. And we've went over that in class, I believe. If not, you can ask in office hours or in sections live, but that's important to know. Otherwise, they're pretty much the same. There's slight differences, of course. So continuing, so data temp three set, we're gonna go set. We'll just do temp two actually. So we're just gonna work on the second one and we're gonna drop the name. And what will this do, drop name? So here, when we do this, the same database that we just worked on temp two, but we have dropped the name column. 
So drop name means we got rid of the name column, but all of the others stay the same in the same exact order. Now, if we keep, now if we can change this to keep name, we'll have keep name and we will see that we only have the name file. So if I wanted to see, this is people who have time greater than 10 or let's say worked 10 years or more, or more than 10 years, I looked at just the people with that name, then I would use keep. But if I only wanted to see the information and did not want to look at uh, the names of people who worked longer than 10 years, I could see this information. So carpenter salary and time. So an example of this, let's say you're owning a company, you want to reward people who've worked for a long period of time. You would just do keep name, keep name. So that way you can see everybody, everybody's name who's worked for a long period of time, just John and Joe who's worked for longer than 10, period, 10 years. But if you want to see information that you could like publish and show it to other people, where you don't have to breach the confidentiality of somebody's giving out people's names or addresses, you could do the drop name. So the information you hand out on the carpenter, the salary and the time, that'll be more public information just because you don't have to tell people the names and what that the, each specific person is working. So that's an example. And then let's do a label example. So data um, level example spelled incorrectly. So set section underscore two. So we're going to use the big data set we already used at the beginning. So label label. So we're going to label our time, well, salary, salary is equal to uh, pay per hour. Oop, almost forgot my semicolon there. Always remember the semicolons. Otherwise, we will have errors when we run. So with the semicolon, we see that here, or everything is the same here. We still have salary, but now let's go to proc contents data is equal to Labo underscore four run. That was not good. So running, and we should see the label is here. So here. Now we have the label column and it tells us exactly that this is in pay per hour or our salary. So that's good to know. So I'm going to stop sharing. Now I hope to see you guys in section or office hours. Again, we do not have class tomorrow because of the holiday. Uh, I will, if you need help on anything, post on Piazza or send me an email. I'll be happy to help and I'll see everybody soon.